Welcome to Private Banking Strategies Podcast with Vance Lowe and Seth Hicks, your secret weapon to protect your assets and never have to start over financially again. Vance and Seth help high net worth individuals, families, business owners, and investors structure an asset-protected, tax-free fortress for their families. Learn how to keep what you earn and use the velocity of money to create your own private banking system. Join us on this journey as we explore the secret strategies of the rich and political elite and help you take total control of your financial security. Now, on to the show. Hello and welcome to Private Banking Strategies with Vance Lowe and Seth Hicks. I'm happy to be here with you both after extended holiday break. Vance, how are you today? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Good. That's great to hear. It's good to talk to you today. Seth, how you been? Doing well, Darren. Thank you for hosting us. My pleasure always. I love to hear it, guys. So there's a wealth of information and knowledge that we're covering today. And from my understanding, we're taking a deep dive into some, some interesting topics. So who would like to start today? Well, Seth, why don't you introduce our topic for us, if you would? Sure. We talk to folks all the time that have misconceptions about what money is and how it works and mindset that that people have that cause them to either succeed or fail, Darian. And what we've noticed is that there are certain parameters and value systems that the wealthy and the, the ultra wealthy have that are all congruent and consistent, which cause them to be wealthy. And there are also certain mindsets and misconceptions and ignorances that people who don't have money and come up lacking have that are consistent among them that keep them poor, keep them, uh, you know, unable to uh, succeed. So we like to, you know, ask people about their value systems for money. And a lot of times what we find is it's, it's not what you know or what you, you think you know about money that's incorrect. It's your inability to learn something that, that you don't really know that you think you do. So Vance, I'll, I'll let you expound on that a little bit. Yeah, let's see if we can't approach today for really that group of people who want to be better off. You know, there's the group of people, as long as they get a paycheck, go home and can drink a beer and watch the football game, they're happy. Okay. You know, we don't want to disturb their life, but it's the individual that thought that they would be better off. Why aren't they? Okay. So let's cover some basics. There are some basic fundamental rules about money that we have to observe. And it's exactly like baking a cake. If you look at a recipe on a cake, you see several items up there. Well, the same thing with money. There are several things you have to do. You can't pick and choose. So Nelson Nash, who brought back the uh, private banking strategy or the infinite banking strategy, putting the banking equation back in our life the way early Americans used to have them uh, before branch banking took hold and uh, I say brainwashed all of us. There are some laws and some rules we have to face every single day. So Folks, a lot of this background is in Nelson Nash's book, Becoming Your Own Banker. These five laws and rules are there. You can really look into the background. But the first one he talks about is called Parkinson's Law. And uh, Seth can uh, help me take a little bit deeper dive here. But uh, initially says, and the, the part that we're after, we have to live on less than we bring home. The crux of the, the matter is that it goes into some other things as well as a luxury once experience becomes a necessity. So let's make sure we've got all the definitions on that. Anything else uh, you can add to Parkinson's law, Seth? Sure. I mean, a lot of times people will ask us, well, you know, who can benefit from private banking strategies? Who, who is uh, the ideal client? And, and Vance and I often respond, this strategy will help any family, any individual, any business keep and grow their wealth parabolically. The only people that it won't work for is people who spend more than they make. They don't manage their finances. They're in ever-increasing debt. And so 
that is a fundamental dovetail to Parkinson's law and being able to live within your means. Yeah, you have to live within your means. And so we have many times conversations, our first meetings are to straighten that out because people are really, really tight. They want to do better. They don't know if they qualify. They can. And so sometimes we have a meeting. uh, I call it find the money, so to speak. Can we do without a couple of luxuries? Can we do this? Can we get back employed? A lot of the non-qualification is because people are living off of already created assets, and it's just a depletion. And so the banking equation is, is the absolute reverse of that, that we want to you know, discover through living these laws. The next one he goes into is called the golden rule. And a lot of us grew up, uh, you know, religious minded and, you know, have a definition on the golden rule. But that's not what he's talking about. The golden rule is he who has the gold makes the rules. Okay. (laughs) And if people have money, they dictate what's going to happen. He goes into stories about uh, governments. Pan America went down into Mexico and wanted to put a plant down there. And uh, the government come back and said, yeah, we'll have the plant, but you have to do this and you have to provide us this and you have to do that. And uh, the company said, no, we don't. And they said, yeah, you do. And they said, goodbye. Uh, it's our money. We'll use it the way we want. We want to benefit your, the workers, the people, you know, not, not the government. So they left the country, and it was over 5,000 uh, workers that could have been employed there at that plant. So he who has the gold makes the rules. You have to have the money, and people will find you. The opportunity will find you. Uh, the next one uh, is we're going to call it the Willie Sutton Law. Seth, can you explain that for us? Darren, Willie Sutton was a famous bank robber who uh, was eventually caught, and he was granted an interview with this uh, investigative reporter, journalist, and they asked him, why did you rob the banks? And he looked at them incredulously and said, duh, it's because that's where the money is. So the concept that we're trying to to convey is that if you have something to protect, there are others out there who want to take it from you. And whether it's government control, IRS taxation, state taxation, competitors in business, or even like Trader Joe's, the retail food store. I, I notice this every time that I go in there. Uh, there'll be a product that they launch, for example, a new product, and it's great. And the volume, let's say, is 16 ounces, and it's two ninety nine. this great value. So you start to buy it, and you come back in there the next time, and it's 14 ounces, and it's three forty nine. And then you come back six months later, and it's 12 ounces, and it's four ninety nine. Mm-hmm. And then you come back again, and they've bumped it up to six ninety nine, and it's eight ounces. And you just kind of scratch your head and go, "This is not the culture that my grandparents lived in. This right. is a culture that is trying to take what I have in my pocket and put it in their pocket." Many times. So the Willie Sutton law is the exact same concept. If you have something to protect, there are others out there that want to take it, whether it's your money your business ideas, your principles, but that is effectively the Willie Sutton law. Yeah. IRS is probably the biggest culprit here, you know, because they, they take whatever they can get, be it right or wrong. Okay. Number four of these, these five rules, these five laws, it's called the arrival syndrome. And unfortunately, Americans are afflicted with this syndrome. The arrival syndrome is, oh, I know what that is. I've been there. I've done that. Oh, whole life insurance. You know, I know all about that. They they pigeonhole information immediately without, you know, finding out more information. They go to a friend and get an opinion. Oh, that must be the law. And therefore, there's another word for the arrival syndrome, and it's called herd mentality. It's just a phenomenon out there, and it's just amazing the number of people who will do the wrong thing because everybody else is doing it. So I warn people, I tell people that 
are you one of the people who are marching off this financial failure cliff with company? Because the successful individual is all alone. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's a syndrome where, you know, if enough people keep doing the wrong thing, it has to be right. And especially today, I see all this stuff going on with government and attitudes and opinions and things like that. And everybody's chosen sides, and they've not done any research at all. Uh, one of the things I do in the spare time is, is I shoot long distance. And there's all kinds of theory and things about how you do load development. And the crux of it is you have to test it out yourself because it's, every gun is different. Every barrel is, is different. And when you put on a new barrel, you have to rediscover everything all over again. So you have to do your due diligence, in other words. The arrival syndrome needs to be defeated. You have to overcome that. You have to be willing to learn. You know, I find this a lot with teachers, professors at college. You can't teach them anything. They, they're there. They know everything. So we've got to be able to defeat that. And the last one is when you learn something new, there are three groups of people. There's the one group, very successful. They make things happen. There's another group that watch things happen. They're ever searching, but never doing. And then, of course, that third group we've already named is they wonder what the heck happened <laughs> in life. So if you learn something new, a lot of people, you know, they go to seminars, they go to workshops, they, they learn about new things, but they procrastinate and they, they lose it. Okay. So when you learn something new, especially the best uh, scenario would be a bad habit. I've got a bad habit. I know it's a bad habit and I need to get rid of it. You can't just rip it out of your life. It's impossible. Uh, all the um, socialistic, you know, doctors uh, or whatever have, have said you can't psychologically do that without a replacement. You've got to replace it with something good. So those are the five laws. Um, Seth, in those five laws, Give us a couple more comments on why they're so devastating and if we live them, why it's so rewarding. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, a disciplined understanding of of how to succeed requires you to, to think through it and see what's working and what's not working. And so many of our clients that we talk to have measures of success, but can with with our help and with the disciplined practice can increase that measure of success exponentially more I and mean, we have millionaires in our group that could be you know tens of millionaire type of volume in their their businesses and their families and it requires you to implement principles that are effective and so like for example i'm Thinking of someone who they, they do a million dollars gross in their business a, a year and they're quite comfortable and their family's just fine and they they stagnate. They just kind of plateau. They don't try to learn new things. They don't put uh, certain alternatives that are right there available for them that could make their life and their business that much better into place. And so a lot of times with with a little help, they can implement those things and create strategies and disciplines that help them take it to another level. Um, I think that's one of the, the things that I, I see a lot is people kind of stagnating at where they are, getting comfortable and not really pushing to grow more. You know, there's called the 80-20 rule. 80% of the people make 20% of the money. 20% of the people make 80% or more of the money. Mm -hmm. You want the effort that separates them? it could be as little as 5% more effort <laughs> to get from one step to the other. So people, I hope you uh, can appreciate what we're giving away is the secret of money and what money can do in your, not can do in your life, but how you accumulate it and, and grow it. 
and be able to keep it in such a way that uh, defies the herd mentality. Because the wealthy are few and far between, and they're private. <laughs> they don't do a lot of advertising. Well, I want to get into the next topic that is really devastating. And every single person, I feel like, does not have an excuse because they know about these three items and they've chosen, physically and mentally chosen, not to live them. The first one's called the 10% rule. And I want to delve into that a little bit because this takes on a little bit again of, of religious connotation for tithing and things like that. But when we bring money home, the first person we pay needs to be ourself. And it has to be upfront and it has to be under any and all conditions. Some months will have a disaster happen, an accident, you know, a deductible or, you know, a whole bunch of bills. And the first thing we do is we throw all of our money at that bill and we forget to pay ourselves. That can't be, that can't happen. And you get be able to get ahead. And for the last several years with clients, when I introduce the 3% rule, I tell them it has to be a commitment from you to me, or I'm not going to proceed. <laughs> <laughs> the strategy won't work for you. Wealth and money will not work for you if you're so easily going to give up the one opportunity that will make you better off. Um, Seth, I want to go into example, and, and I would love for you to follow this up. I, I share with people everyday life examples. Let's say an everyday life example is I bring home after taxes $10,000 a month. So I need to pay myself off the top first at least at least $1,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I set $1,000 to the table, off to the table. Did I tie that up or did I free that $1,000 up? What would be you guys' answer? I'd say you freed it up. Exactly. A lot of people think we tie that up. We do not tie it up. We free it up and we have a goal for that money, which is to put it to work. We want to put that to work to produce money. The whole purpose here is to become financially independent. You have to put more and more money actually out there working for you on a steady basis. This is why this 10% rule is so critical. Okay, so let's find out what sabotages it. We set the thousand dollars aside. Now we got a stack of bills and the remaining money. And we go down that stack of money and we're now out of money, but we're not out of bills. We got one more bill. Murphy's Law here. Okay. That bill is due today and it just so happens to be for a thousand dollars. What does everybody end up doing? Takes out a loan. No, they take that thousand dollars and they pay that bill because it's due today. Due today, yes. Okay, and because it's a, it may be a freak bill. It may be a one of a time, but it's due now. The money's right here. I could pay the bill. Well, let me tell you, if you do that, you lose. But we do that. You just passed up the very best opportunity to invest money that you could ever create in your life. If you split yourself between two people, there's you, the investor, and then those, there's that guy looking back at you in the mirror. He's your client, okay? He's the one living off of you free. He's out of money. It's he who is out of money. You just put into production $1,000. Don't you think the two of you could get together? Couldn't you say, hey, I could lend you $1,000? And now that I'm the bank, couldn't you create a repayment schedule that would fit your budget? Everybody yes, could. could. And even if it started out wrong, how hard would it be to refinance? Be very easy because it's you're the bank. Now the only question is, do you want your earnings high or low? Did that story feel like it was about you? Do you feel you should be making more progress toward your financial goals? Do you feel stuck? Let us help you get unstuck. Are you ready to take action and get your own private bank? 
please call Private Banking Strategies at 817-200-4777 or visit us at www.privatebankingstrategies.com. Oh, you want the earnings high. We want the money high. We don't even mm -hmm. care how long it takes to pay that bill off. We want to put $1,000 into production. So couldn't we charge ourselves? 25% or even 50% in interest because that interest will be tax free and still keep the payment exactly where we want. So if we're making 25% on a thousand dollars, how many other investments do we have out there that is netting us 25% after taxes? A little to none. It's called the 10% rule. No matter come heck or high water, you're going to be that much better off every single month. You go one month without that, it sets you way back. Okay? It sets you back. You can never get ahead that way. Seth, you know, tie that up for us, would you? <laughs> sure. Yeah. You know, what we're talking about is using the money that comes under your control for your benefit. And most people treat money like it isn't valuable uh, and they let it flow out of their control rather than having it flow back into their control so for example you have a car expense uh, in the form of a car note and you could effectively finance and purchase that car in a variety of ways and one of them is you could pay the car dealership to finance it for you. And a lot of people do that because they've got low interest rates. You could finance it through your own banking entity, your own private banking strategy, pay your own interest back to your bank and, and effectively have a multiplied return. And I've described this on multiple podcasts before. If you use the auto dealership to finance your car, when you've paid it off totally, you have a car that's depreciated over the term of your loan. If you finance it through your own bank, you have all of the money that you spent on the car, plus the interest, plus whatever's compounded and grown year after year, and you have a depreciated value of the car. So the difference, like let's say on a $50,000 car, you'll have, you'll have your $50,000 plus the interest and accumulated uh, compounding growth, let's call it 65,000, and you'll have a car that's worth 35,000 and thereby you've got a hundred thousand dollars in total value and wealth if you finance it through the auto dealership you just got a thirty five thousand dollar depreciated car all that money's out of your control so that's a really easy example for everybody to understand about utilizing the money that comes under your control you can capitalize your own banking entity and you can utilize your banking entity to finance your life and finance all sorts of expenses uh, and consumables even. And all you have to do is figure out the right formula to match your cash flow. I want to identify what a wrong formula is that we normally do with cars or anything else. We've all heard that paying cash for everything is the best way to get through life. Well, folks, you know, what we think we know about money that's incorrect is really going to kill us, especially in this situation. This was set up and propagated by the banks to keep us slaves to the system. And here's why. It's a get back to zero strategy. We save up for the vehicle. Then we take that money and we pay for the vehicle. Where does that leave us? Zero. Mm -hmm. Okay. No more, no money in production. Okay. And we don't think we have a car payment. Everybody, no matter how they acquire the car is going to have a car payment. And if they'll face up to that, the things like Seth just said can happen, you know, and, and the abundance and the opportunity will, will seek them out. Or we go into debt. We let the car dealership finance it. Now we're heavily in debt and we make those payments up and let's say we pay it off. We have a depreciated a asset, but where does that leave us? Zero. Okay. We're showing you folks a way that you could leave that behind forever and always increase wealth. So let's go on to one that nobody believes they can live. And it is so easy to explain away. It's called never 
spending principle. Seth, what is principle? Well, principle is the seed. It's the seed that comes into your hand. You, you don't eat your seed. You don't spend principle. Okay. Another way to define that is people, you know, they just get their eyes really big and then they just, uh, you know, that, that can't be true. But they've all heard you can never, ever spend principle. The successful people don't. It's mm -hmm. the money after taxes that you bring in to your domain under your control every single month. That's principal. We can't spend it. And everybody starts scratching that. Well, I've got expenses. I've got living, you know, expenses, overhead, everything. You know, that's, that's a fallacy. That's an impossibility. And they give up at the beginning. They don't need to. What if we can show people how to get back 100% of their monthly expenses every single month? Would that person then be spending principal? The answer is no. Well, you can't do that. Well, let me ask you this question. Do the banks always get the money back? Always. Always. Oh, well, what about the, the bad loans? Uh-uh. They still get the money back. It's called collateral. Okay. <laughs> A bank will 10 times at least your loan in collateral. They want a million times. In other words, they want control of everything you have on a $10,000 loan, <laughs> on a million-dollar company, all your inventory, everything. They'll put, make you sign that, okay? So you, uh, on the basis of, of principle, if we can get it back, then we're not spending it. But now we discover the use of money. Money has to move. It's called velocity and volume. We have to move it. So we're going to do it just like the banks. We're going to show you how to do that. You know, we have, uh, as people go through our process, I'm not even there. Seth's not even there to show them how to do that. It's They look, learn it from a 20-minute video. And by the time they're done with that video, they look at each other, if they're spouses or whatever else, and they're nodding their head. Yeah, we'll always get the principal back if we do that but we haven't been doing that. Okay. We didn't even know we could do that. So this is the secrets maybe of money that the banks don't want you to know. We have a little book titled that and later on Seth will tell you how to get that, but uh, never spending principal folks, you put it to work you and you get it back, which means you're going to learn how to get multiple touches on the same dollars. Boy, if we could, you know, purchase something, get the money back and repurchase and get another one and with the same dollar, our lives would really improve as far as the value of money. Well, inside of a town, if I were to go into town, stop and buy gas and fill up for 50 bucks, now town has a new $50. That gas station owner say, hey, I've got $50. I'm going to go across the street and I'm going to buy $50 worth of groceries. And he comes back with $50 worth of groceries. But now my 50 bucks is with the grocery store. The grocery store owner says, hey, I depleted inventory. I got to go buy, you know, stock my shelves. So he goes across town to the warehouse, buys $50 worth of inventory, comes back with $50 worth of inventory. But now my $50 is at the warehouse. And then the warehouse takes it to the dentist. The dentist takes it to the mechanic. The man, mechanic takes it to the restaurant, so on and so forth, all over town. It's only $150, but look what that does. And everybody listening to this, it's probably not happening in your life, but could be happening. It's easy to set up. It's easy to do. If you have money working for you, <clears throat> when you go to work and earn income, that little the, uh, of the total amount you produce from your efforts, you get back in principle. There's one more fallacy here, and, and, and Seth, I want you to really, you know, just polish this out for us. People think, again, this is incorrect thinking, if I spend a dollar every month, I just have to go back to work and earn a dollar. And that's totally incorrect. First of all, if you're working for someone, you have to make them a lot of money to justify your pay, right? So 
That could be 10 to 1. It could be even 20 to 1. And then you don't take into account you had to drive your car there. So there's wear and tear on your vehicle, your clothing, and now you add your time in to, to earn that, that paycheck, okay? Because that's a separate item. And as we go down the list, you are making money for all sorts of people, in essence. And the last one would be Willie Sutton or the IRS is going to take their share without any effort at all. So depending on the circumstances, it's easy, 20, 25 to 1 you've got to produce a lot more money in the system for you to clear one. And then you turn around and spend it again. Correct me, you guys. If that's not a definition of insanity, I don't know what is. <laughs> and this is why people are get more and more frustrated and disgruntled as years go on and they don't see improvements. Seth, what do you think there? What have I missed? I think you're, you know, you're hitting the nail on the head. These rules are rules that folks can easily implement. First, you have to have the awareness that uh, of what's limiting you, and you have to have the ability to, to grow and learn new things. But this is not complex. It's not super sophisticated, strategically impossible, or uh, an insurmountable thing to accomplish. Like Vance said, we have tools and things that we put in our clients' hands that help them learn these strategies easily and quickly and understand how money should flow in their own family economy and how they can get it back and how they can turn uh, what looks like uh, negatives into positives. And one of the things that Vance is, is such an expert at is helping them analyze their own expenses, their own debt, and be able to uh, set out a, what we call an eight-year roadmap that shows them the positive growth month after month, year after year for eight years, and shows them exactly what to do step by step to get to the end of the golden road, so to speak, end of the rainbow. And um, it, it's it's really quite phenomenal for people. And, and I've said this before, Vance really loves to help the underdog, the people that are out in credit card debt and turn them into success stories and so we you know it's available to people everyone is a candidate you just have to learn how to manage your own family economy yeah i think if, uh, people listen to some of our podcasts we have uh, one car ca called chiropractor story it was one of the very first things that happened in uh, in, in helping people and, and people can look at that and research that what seth just introduced was the the third rule or the third thing we cannot do without and that's a well-defined written plan that's updated regularly people choose not to do that just i'll prove it to you go ask you know at least three of your friends, if they have a written financial plan, and if all three don't say no, I would be surprised. And if you keep asking and you get to 10, you might find one. Just make sure he's not lying to you. <laughs> <laughs> but we have to have a plan. A plane can't take off in the air without a flight plan, right? right. That's my law. OK, uh, a ship can't set sail without, you know, exactly where where they're headed. A train, of course, they, they have a track, but they still have a destination and know exactly what it's going to do. And everything is calculated down to how much fuel is going to be burned, everything else. So successful corporations, they have five year, you know, one year, five year, 10 year plans. Um, and this comes from Warren Buffett himself. When Warren Buffett decides to invest in a company, many, many times he absolutely surprises the ownership and the board of directors of that company. When he comes into him and says, hey, I'd like to have a meeting uh, thinking about investing uh, with you guys. Well, that's a great opportunity because, you know, they put the word out. They need investors. So when he comes in, he'll literally lay out a 10-year financial plan for him and tell them where they're going, and they don't even know it. 
you know, if I'm going to invest $100 million here, okay, this is the potential you guys have. So we need to make sure, you know, this is where you guys are pointed. This is where you want to go and that we put the infrastructure together to assure us that we're going to get there because I don't invest in things that lose money. <laughs> so these three rules are absolutely critical that we agree with. So a financial plan needs to be simple, something that you have 100% confidence in that you know you can perform every single month. And surprising, even with our clients, I'm seeing the group split out in threes, okay? A third of them are literally updating the plan on a regular basis. They're asking questions of, can I do this? Can I do that? You know, I've implemented this. Oh, by the way, I have a lot more money, you know, that I could add to this. Then there's the group following the plan religiously, just like it's planned out. And then every, almost every day, I get a phone call of, of people that are struggling. And the first thing I ask them, are you following the plan? No. <laughs> Why did we go to all the work? I just before we started our, our our podcast today, I just had a Myra come in and tell you've got an appointment with a client that is questioning things, and no, he's not following the plan. So, you know, we we need to deal with that. Uh, we want to help everybody. So, these financial laws, the five financial laws, and the three money principles, if you can defeat those laws and live those principles, you cannot help but succeed. Success is just going to happen. You can fall flat on your face. You can trip. You can, you know, have all kinds of disasters come your way, but you can't help but succeed because you're doing everything. That cake's going to come out every single time. You are going to come out every single time. That's some excellent insight, Vince. Excellent insight. What I want to say is, as you guys have heard today, using money the right way can reap tremendous amount of success, but using it the wrong way can be very scary. So if you're in the group of watching things happen or worse, wondering what the heck happened and want to start making things happen, Seth Mans can provide you with the knowledge and tools needed. What else do you have for us today, guys? Well, I'll tell you how you can start the journey. We have a book that we like to call the red pill book, and it's called How to Grow Rich with the Secret that Banks Don't Want You to Know. And we discover and explore some of the principles that we've talked about today and others and how you can effectively create your own wealth curve with implementing some simple changes. And you find that on our website. It's at privatebankingstrategies.com. That's privatebankingstrategies.com. And you'll find a pop-up there where you tell us your name and, and your email. And the book is available to you either by PDF or audio version at that point. And so you can listen to it on the go. We've made it available in, in multiple media formats for the convenience of folks that want to learn. And after that, we have a vast resource of podcast and where we go into deeper dives and illustrations about certain things that apply to various clientele, business owners, entrepreneurs, families in debt. And those are all categorized in our website uh, under resources and under podcast, podcast resources. And so once you've done that, if you've, you've listened to the book and listened to a podcast or, or two and things resonate with you, the next step is to schedule a call with Vance. And he will start to walk you through this process and ultimately get you prepared to plan your own eight-year roadmap with him that shows you exactly what to do step-by-step step to take you into the next stratosphere with your wealth. So that's basically our process. I love it. And I'm sure the audience has a few questions. They always do, but they know how to get in touch with you guys. Thank you to, to you, Seth, for saying that. Vance, you made an excellent reference to a previous episode that I myself listened to as well with Mr. Chiropractor. If anyone else is interested in hearing that remarkable story, you can find it again on the website. It's on the resource tab and podcast, and it is episode five, Put Your Debt to Work for You, part one. 
And before we go, Vince, do you have any last minute remarks? No, I just want everybody to be able to succeed, to break out of the chains they don't even know they're that existing around their ankles, you know, and the traps about money. It's not hard to end up life with more money than you started with instead of worrying about, am I going to outlive my money? That's Beautiful the motivation. Set. Okay. For <laughs> us. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Not only can I relate to it, but I know everyone in the audience can as well. We want to thank our audience for tuning in and supporting the private banking strategy podcast with Vance Lowe and Seth Hicks. If you have not subscribed to the podcast, guys, please hit that subscribe button below. That way you're up to date when a new episode comes out. Lastly, if you have any questions, please email us and visit the privatebankingstrategies.com website as soon as you can. This podcast really, guys, is about educating you. So if you want to hear more from us, please tune in as soon as you can. And we also want to hear from you guys. So we also remind you to review and share this episode as it helps us find uh, new people find the show. Again, thank you for tuning in from everyone here at Private Banking Strategies, and we'll see you guys next time. Did that story feel like it was about you? Do you feel you should be making more progress toward your financial goals? Do you feel stuck? Let us help you get unstuck. Are you ready to take action and get your own private bank? Please call Private Banking Strategies at 817-200-4777 or visit us at www.privatebankingstrategies.com.